In this lesson, we want to review finding the distance between two points using the distance formula. So in our last lesson, we reviewed the coordinate plane and how to plot points or ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. So now what we're going to do is just discuss how we can find the distance between two points or again, two ordered pairs on our coordinate plane. So to accomplish this task, we have a very simple formula. It's known as the distance formula. Now this is not to be confused with the distance formula, the distance equals rate of speed times time traveled that we used with motion word problems. Although it does have the same name, it accomplishes a very different task. So this formula we're gonna to get today is something we could just plug into, we're gonna evaluate, and we're basically gonna have our answer right away, okay? But the purpose of this lesson is not to just give you this easy formula. We want you to understand where it comes from and essentially it's gonna come from the Pythagorean theorem or you could say the Pythagorean formula. So we talked about the Pythagorean formula already in our lesson on applications of quadratic equations. This is also something you would have learned in an elementary algebra course or an intermediate algebra course. It's something that comes up a lot. So basically the Pythagorean formula relates the lengths of the sides of a right triangle or a triangle with a 90 degree angle. So on our screen, what we have here is a right triangle. And we know it's a right triangle because of this symbol right here. This guy is telling us that we have a 90 degree angle. So you'll also notice that we've labeled each of the three sides of the right triangle. A right triangle is gonna consist of two legs and we've labeled each leg here. So we have leg A, which is basically from here to here. Let me just highlight that real quick. So this is leg A and then we have leg B which is basically from here to here, okay? Let me highlight that as well. So this is our leg B. And then we have a hypotenuse, okay? So the hypotenuse is the side that's opposite of the 90 degree angle. So in this particular case, it's going to be from here to here, okay? So that's gonna be my hypotenuse. So the right triangle is gonna have two legs and a hypotenuse. And again, the hypotenuse is always opposite of the 90 degree angle the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side, okay? So the two shorter sides are known as legs. The longest side is known as the hypotenuse. Now our Pythagorean formula tells us that if we sum the squares of the two legs, okay, the two shorter sides, it will be equal to the square of the hypotenuse or again, the longest side. So for the Pythagorean formula, we get that this distance here for leg A, that guy squared plus this distance here for leg B, that amount squared. If we sum these again, two shorter sides, those amounts squared, we get the hypotenuse or C squared. Okay, so this is the relationship between the sides in a right triangle, okay? So let's take a look at a quick example. So one common application of this formula is that if you have a right triangle and you know two of the three sides, you can solve for the third unknown. Okay, so this is basically what we're gonna be doing when we derive our distance formula. So as a quick example, suppose that we know that leg B is going to be eight. Okay, so that's the distance there. From here to here, that's my leg B, that's eight. We don't know what leg A is. So we don't know what this to this is, but we do know what the hypotenuse or C is. Let me kind of write this in as C there. So this guy's gonna be 17. So again, we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So what I can do for this example is plug in for B, we know that's eight, so I'm gonna plug that in there, and I could plug in for C, we know the hypotenuse is 17, so we would end up with A squared plus eight squared is 64, and this is equal to 17 squared, which is 289. To solve for A, what I'd wanna do is get this guy by itself first, so I would subtract 64 away from each side of the equation. We would have a squared is equal to 289 minus 64 is 225. Now, here's where you gotta kinda pay attention to what's going on. We know how to solve this type of equation. So let me write this over here. We have a squared is equal to, again, 225. Up to this point, we've pretty much just taken the square root of each side. But when I take the square root of this side on the right, I have to go plus or minus to kind of account for all the possible solutions. Now, there's an issue with that in this particular case. We'd end up with A is equal to plus or minus 15. Now, A here 
is again a length, it's a distance. So it can't be negative 15. So you'd want to throw this solution out and just say that A here is going to be 15. Okay, so let me erase this. We'll kind of come back up here and I'll just write here that this guy is 15. Okay, so this triangle here, we have leg B that's 8. We have leg A that's 15. And we have C, our hypotenuse, that's going to be 17. All right, so now let's move on and talk about how to find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane using our Pythagorean formula. We're gonna start with this example here. So we wanna find the distance between six comma four and zero comma negative four. I'll show you how to do this the long way, and then we'll move into kind of deriving the distance formula. And then from then on, once we use that formula, it'll be very, very easy. So let's go down to the coordinate plane and let's first write our ordered pairs. We have six comma four, and then we have zero comma negative four, okay? So for six comma four, if we plot that, we start at the origin, we go six units to the right and four units up, so that's right there. So this is six comma four. For zero comma negative four, starting at the origin, I just drop down four units. So this would be zero comma negative four. Okay, I'll put that there. And essentially what we're gonna end up doing is finding the distance between these two points. So let me just draw a little line that connects the two. So this line right here is going to end up being our hypotenuse or longest side of the right triangle. So how can we end up drawing our right triangle? Well, what we're going to need is one additional endpoint, right, for the right triangle or one additional corner. Or you could say one additional vertex. Now, how do we get that? Some of you can see that it's going to end up being right here, okay? But the way you can draw this is you can take an X value from one of the points so let's just say I take six. Then I've got to take a Y value from the opposite point, okay? So now I'm going to take a Y value of negative four. So that's how I get this point here, which is six comma negative four. Okay, so I can use this to kind of complete my right triangle. Now, I can also make a right triangle by using alternate kind of coordinates. So I can take the X value from here, which is zero, and the Y value from here, which is four. So if I erase this and I go to zero comma four, we could also draw a right triangle that way. This way is gonna be a little bit better for me to kind of show things. So I'm just gonna stick with the original one that I came up with. So an X value of six and then a Y value of negative four. Okay, so that'll be kind of our third point on this right triangle, okay? So let me kind of draw this in. Okay, so not perfect, but we get the idea here. So let me kind of draw my symbol here for the 90 degree angle. So this is our right triangle. And essentially we know that this side right here that's opposite of the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna label that as C. And then the two shorter sides, I can label that as A and B. So I'm just gonna stay consistent with what I've done previously. And I'm gonna say that this horizontal leg, this kind of side that's horizontal or parallel to the X axis, I'm gonna call that leg B. This vertical leg or this kind of side that is parallel to the Y axis, I'm gonna call that leg A, okay? But you can interchange these two, it's not a big deal, right? As long as the hypotenuse is labeled as C, the formula I gave you will work. So it's pretty easy to find the length of the legs. For B, the horizontal leg, we just find the distance by subtracting the X values, okay? And the reason we do that is because the x-axis or the horizontal axis are movements left and right, right? You think about this line as being a horizontal line. So all we need to really consider is the x value here of zero, which is kind of the x value for that point there, and the x value here of six, which is the x value for this point there. So if you wanna think about this, you can think about this as being on a horizontal number line like this. Let's say that this point right here is six and this point right here is zero. So what I'd end up doing here is just subtracting and I wanna do this inside of an absolute value operation so that I end up getting a positive result, right? Distance is never gonna be negative, so that's why you do that. So I could do the absolute value of six minus zero, which is the absolute value of six, which is just six, or I could do the absolute value of zero minus six, which is the absolute value of negative six, which is also six. So I know that my B here, let me kinda of write this here, my B is going to be six. Okay, so what about A? Well, with A, this is our vertical leg, and we wanna find the distance by subtracting Y values, okay? 
Because again, when we think about y, it's our vertical axis, it's our vertical number line. The y values are movements up and down. So if I think about kind of this point here and this point here, the y values are gonna be four and negative four, okay? So I wanna think about the fact that to go from here to here, I would have to go from four to zero, which is four units, and then another four units down would give me another four. So four plus four would give me eight. But again, you find that through subtraction. So you could do four minus a negative four. So four minus a negative four is the same thing as four plus four. You do that inside of an absolute value operation. So this ends up being the absolute value of eight, which is eight. Or you could do it the other way. You could say that you have negative four minus four. Again, inside of absolute value bars. So this ends up being the absolute value of negative eight, which is also eight. Okay, so you see that distance from here to here is going to be eight. So I'm gonna put that A is eight. Now, once we have this information, we're basically good to go, right? Because we can just plug into the formula. We know that a squared, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I know what a is, it's eight. So I'm gonna plug that in there. I know what b is, that's six. So I'm gonna plug that in there. I don't know what c is, but again, I can find it pretty easily here. So I'll have eight squared plus six squared equals c squared. So eight squared is 64. This is 64. Then plus six squared is 36. This equals C squared. 64 plus 36 is 100. So you get 100 is equal to C squared. I'm just gonna take the principal square root of each side. I don't need the plus or minus over here on the left. So I'm just gonna have that 10 is equal to C, okay? So let me erase all this and I'll write that C here equals 10. So that's this value right here. So this guy is going to be 10. And I can write the other values in if I want. We know that A is eight and we know that B is six, okay? Instead of having to graph things each time, we have this very easy formula that we can use. We can just basically plug into this guy. This is called the distance formula. And what it is is we've taken the Pythagorean formula and we've taken our points that we're working with and we've kind of set everything up. So essentially, if I had these two points, again, we were working with six comma four and we were working with zero comma negative four. I'm gonna label one of the points as x sub one, y sub one, and the other as x sub two, y sub two. Doesn't matter which I label as which. So I'm just gonna say this is x sub one, y sub one, and I'm gonna say this is x sub two, y sub two, okay? So if I plug in here for x sub two, I've got a zero, and then minus for x sub one, I've got a six. So you'll notice that what this gives us is the kind of horizontal distance, if I go back up, we see that from here to here, we have a horizontal distance of six, right? We can find that by doing the absolute value of six minus zero, or we can find that by doing the absolute value of zero minus six. Either way, we get a distance of six units. Now, in this particular case, you don't see absolute value signs, and that's because we end up squaring this guy. So if we get a negative, it doesn't matter, right? It ends up making it positive. If I did six minus zero, I would get six. If I square it, I get 36. If I do zero minus six, I get negative six. If I square it, I still get 36, okay? So that's why we don't have absolute value signs involved. Then plus, here you have the difference in y values. So we have y sub two, which is going to be negative four, and then minus y sub one, which is gonna be four. Again, we're squaring this result. If I go back, we see that's the difference in y values, right? Or the vertical distance. So we see that we have what? Negative four down here and positive four here. So I do the absolute value of negative four minus four to get that distance. Okay, that gives me the absolute value of negative eight, which is eight. Again, we don't need to use absolute value bars here because we're squaring the result. So let me just kind of do this off to the side. We have D is equal to the square root of zero minus six is negative six, negative six squared is 36 then plus negative four minus four is negative eight, negative eight squared is 64. So you remember this is what we ended up getting when we squared A and B, okay? So if we were at this point right here, let me label this as C. So right now we would have C squared is equal to what? You'd have A squared plus B squared. So to solve for C or the distance between those two points, all I did was I renamed this C as D, right? To count for distance. And I just took the square root of each side, so this becomes just d by itself, and this becomes the square root over here. Okay, so that's where this comes from. So now we just quickly say 36 plus 64 is 100. We take the square root of 100, and we get that d is equal to 10.
okay? So you can see I found that in just a few seconds, or you could say pretty much instantly with this formula versus having to go to a coordinate plane and kind of, you know, draw a right triangle and go through it each time. Okay, so this is definitely what we're going to be using for application purposes, but we wanted to make sure you understand where it came from. All right, so let's run through a few examples now. So we want to find the distance between each pair of points, and we're just going to use our distance formula. So we have 2 comma 1, and we have negative 3 comma negative 11. Okay, so the distance formula, we say that d is equal to the square root of, you've got this x sub 2 minus x sub 1, this quantity squared. Again, this is the difference in x values or your horizontal leg, right, that distance there. Then plus you have y sub 2 minus y sub 1, this quantity squared. Again, this is the difference in kind of y values. That's going to give you your vertical leg. Okay, let me kind of make this better. Okay, so I'm going to label one of these points as x sub 1, y sub 1, and the other as x sub 2, y sub 2. It doesn't matter which I label as which. So we'll say this is x sub 1, y sub 1. We'll say this is x sub 2, y sub 2. Okay, just to keep it nice and simple. So for x sub 2, I have negative 3. For x sub 1, I have 2. So let me erase these and just plug in. So this is negative 3 minus 2 there. And then I can erase this. For y sub 2, I have negative 11. So I have negative 11. For y sub 1, I have 1. So let me plug that in. So negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. So this is 25. Negative 11 minus 1 is going to be negative 12. Negative 12 squared is 144. So if I sum 25 and 144, I get 169. And if I take the square of 169, I get 13. Okay, so the distance between these two points is 13. Let's take a look at another one. So we have 19 common negative 4, and we have 3 common negative 34. So the distance between these two points, again, the D for distance is equal to the square root of, you've got x sub 2 minus x sub 1, this quantity squared, then plus you've got y sub 2 minus y sub 1, again, this quantity squared. For this guy right here, I'll just switch it up and say this is x sub 2, y sub 2, and I'll say this is x sub 1, y sub 1. So let's just plug in. So we have that x sub 2 is 19, so this is 19. We have that x sub 1 is 3. Then we have that y sub 2 is going to be negative 4. We have that y sub 1 is going to be negative 34. So minus the negative 34 is plus 34. Let's write that in like that. 19 minus 3 is 16, so you'd have 16 squared, which is going to be 256. So let me just write this as 256 here. And then negative 4 plus 34 is 30. If you square 30, you get 900. Okay, so this is 900 here. So what is 256 plus 900? That's 1,156. And if you take the square root of that, you end up with 34. Okay, so we'll put that the distance here is 34. All right, let's take a look at one more example. Again, when you use the formula, it's extremely easy. So the distance between these two points, you have negative 10 comma 15, and you have 12 comma 17. So my distance, my D, is equal to the square root of, you've got your X sub 2 minus your X sub 1 squared, then plus your Y sub 2 minus your Y sub 1 squared, okay? So I'm just going to label this guy as X sub 1, Y sub 1, I'll label this guy as x sub 2, y sub 2, okay? So I'm just going to plug it. So we have that x sub 2 is going to be 12. We have that x sub 1 is going to be negative 10, so minus the negative 10 is plus 10. We have that y sub 2 is going to be 17, okay, 17. We have that y sub 1 is going to be 15, okay? So pretty easy here. So 12 plus 10 is 22. 22 squared is 484. And then 17 minus 15 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So if I add 484 and 4, I get 488. So 488. Now, 488 is not a perfect square. So to kind of simplify this, 488 divided by 4 is 122. So I'm going to write this as the square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 122. Now, I can't do anything with the square root of 122. I'm just going to leave that as it is. So this is my kind of simplified answer. We have the distance is equal to 2 times the square root of 122.